So uh, we have Carlos Portillo here today, and uh, and uh, he was one of the original people with the one-year club. So he's one of the people that I have a thousand-dollar bet with to only drink three times in 2019. So he can only drink two, three times in 2019. I can, or I owe him a thousand, or he owes me a thousand. That's the way we set it up. That's kind of where the mechanism idea completely started from. And <clears throat> How many, how many times, like, 2018 and before, whatever, you think you'd drink? Probably, uh, you know, pretty frequent. I'd say maybe at least once every weekend, twice, you know. So, yeah, definitely, like, uh, more frequent than three times. Like twice a week. Yeah, twice a week, yeah. But, I mean, you never saw it as, like, a real <laughs> issue or anything. Like, like Derek, Derek drinking, like, a 12-pack and... Five whiskey shooters every day. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, you know, it's definitely a couple of times where you want to let loose and whatnot, but you know, probably not something that you know I have an issue with because I'd still do my thing, you know, go to the gym, work out, and that type of thing. So the um, <clears throat> so has it been hard for you to only drink three times this year? You know what? Yeah, I think it's still definitely a struggle because I mean. Let's be honest, alcohol tastes good. <laughs> right. You know, you can have a great time, you know, so it's just, yeah, it's, it's something different, you know, because, yeah, we all see alcohol as the thing that you do to kind of decompress, you know, during, you know, after the work week is done. And then, um, yeah, just to have a good time, you know, family, friends, um, you know, at a game, you know, so. Yeah. It's just the thing you do, yeah. Yeah, everybody drinks. The, uh, I mean, <laughs> shit. You go to you go to a fifty year old's birthday party. You go to a newborn's birthday party. You know what I mean? Everybody's drinking and everywhere in between. The um, I know for me, my whole my whole thing for this year was just to be effective because I, I I was wasting a lot of time drinking or being hung over, and I wasn't really focused on anything that I needed to do. And f dude, there's no way I I can't even compare how much success I've had this year to any previous year in my entire life. Like I've literally killed it this year so far. And I just want to keep keep it going. Like I, I think I'm gonna have a mechanism every single year until I die. Controlling my drinking. But as far as you go, how is how is your how has your level of success been this year? Well I can say um, you know one thing's for sure is you're definitely more focused, you know, so your your um your attention is not on you know like all right hey you know, we're gonna drink this weekend are we gonna hang out or you know what are we gonna do it's focused more on like and, and not just on a business level but a personal level so it's like <clears throat> you know it's like <clears throat> your thoughts are all right so what can i do this weekend you know instead of drinking mm -hmm. Uh, you're you're thinking like all right so shoot like I got all these ideas you know <clears throat> and it's like all right maybe I could do this maybe I could work on this uh, so you just kind of start working on those things and, and you start seeing uh, ways to be more productive you know just honestly just straight up so you know I, I noticed myself creating more things, you know, like taking notes, ideas, oh, boom, this is an idea, boom, this is an idea, then doing research, you know, and figuring out how to implement, you know, these things. And, um, you know, just honestly, like uh, right now, I got a house on the market, you know, I never, never would have thought I would have owned a house or even be selling a house or even considering like, uh, even going further into it, getting other properties and then just going from there. But I mean, it's all possible. And with the clouded mindset, thinking just about how to gratify your own desires, you know, your own pleasures, you know, you're just like, well, oh, shoot, like I can do this, I can do that. Oh, that's a great idea. Or, you know, if it's like in the gym, like, hey, you know, I can hit another set, you know, I can do more. Like, it's just like, you just keep pushing and pushing. And it's just, you know, it's not about, you know, how toasted I'm about to get, you know, or, or whatever. But it's just, 
yeah, you're just that much more productive, you know. I know one of the things with alcohol for me, like, even if I drank just like a six pack, I'd still feel it. Like, it, it would affect me for like another day or two. And I know when I drink, I'm f- absolutely fantastic. But then the next day, well, the last time I drank was at the lake, which was, I don't even remember. Uh, three weeks ago? Three weeks ago, okay. three or four <clears throat> weeks ago. I was screwed for four days. <laughs> like the the anxiety level, like you, I, you don't even realize that you get the anxiety. But I, I knew that I didn't have anxiety before, and then I wake up and just like, man, can I really do the things that I'm trying to do right now? Like the whole day, I'm just like thinking like that. I, mean, I couldn't even, I couldn't reach out to sellers. I couldn't do a lot of the things that I would do normally, fearlessly. And one of the things that I wanted to really touch on here is we're not talking about. <laughs> never being able to drink. We're not saying drinking is, is, is bad. It's, it's actually pretty, pretty cool. Not, not cool. Like, Oh, you should drink. It's cool stuff, but it's not a bad thing unless you're drinking in excess. And we, it's, it's, it's an obvious thing. Everybody knows this. Yeah. But our idea was just to, just to <clears throat> control ourselves to the point where we could do stuff. And I want to talk, I want to talk about, so Carlos, at the beginning of the year, had never, ever been a foreman on a job site, ever. Right. Right. Yep. What was the job that you? What What was the dollar value of the job that you did this last year? Over a million. Yeah. No. I was. No. It was like three million. Okay. So yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was a big job. <coughs> Definitely. Um, it was a three three story, hundred eighty thousand square foot hospital. Had what? How much? It had. It just had regular power. Did it have emergency power on it too? Yeah, emergency power, regular power, just a couple of UPSs, MRI room, CAT scan. Yeah, MRI, CAT scan, three X-ray rooms, uh, an MRI, and uh, yeah, the CT. CT. Yeah. <clears throat> He's all being all humble about it, but like the thing about it is. That would have been fucking hard to pull that off, yeah. riding through some hangovers every day. I mean, shit, you watched your crew, because your crew was... <laughs> sure. Yeah, they were those guys, <laughs> they were pretty much hungover almost every other day, you know, but uh, the stress level was just crazy, but, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, you got to... Yeah, you gotta have that, uh, again, you know, your focus, you gotta have that uh, mindset, like, like, hey, man, I'm gonna freaking do this, like, no matter what it takes, no matter, you know, how many gray hairs I gained over that year, just, you know, and dealing with freaking people that were just kind of sometimes idiots and whatnot, and, and, yeah, just not knowing, you know, just doing your best with what you have, you know, and, and, and even though there was times that I, you know, probably could have walked off the job or quit and just been like, this is it, you know, I just decided like, nah, you know what, and like, hell no, man, there's not going to be no, no quitting bone in me, you know, it's just going to do whatever it takes. So, <clears throat> you know, the focus, the drive, and then, uh, like he was saying, you know, like Alan's saying, it's just, uh, just that first time being a foreman really like nobody's there to just you know like uh babysit me or like kind of just <clears throat> you know cater me and say this is how it goes and, you know just kind of learning and going but i don't think i would have had that drive given that if i had a, a coasting mindset to just to not want to 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 do that to be more um so yeah, no, it was it was definitely a, a a trial and a struggle, but it was good. I mean, I mean, I think you've said a couple of times that you know, like, dude, you're killing it, and like, I was just like out there, I was like, I'm just trying to, bro, I'm just doing my thing, man. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, you know, it's just if you want more, you know, you gotta. I don't know. I think it's like if you want more, you gotta be more. You know, and sometimes you can't be more if your if your focus isn't you know there. So, you know, to me, I, it's just it's like I battle fear, fear and self doubt all the time, no matter what. 
even <clears throat> even on my best days, I have I I battle with fear and doubt, and it, it's like it's like sticking you in the ring with some with a, like you're a fighter and you're stuck in the ring with another fighter, clear headed as hell, and they're like, okay, let's add alcohol onto you, dude, and let's just tie a weight on your fucking right leg. You know what I mean? Like literally, that's that's what it does to. <clears throat> I can't even, I, I can't, honestly, so I drink every fucking day last year. I drink like the last, last four years or so, I drink every day. This just was part of my thing. I, and I was coasting because I knew my job really well because I, I did it for, when I finally quit was what, about 12 years? You know, I knew how to deal with the foreman. You know, I, I knew people did, some people you need a fucking baby, you know what I mean? Some people you just kind of throw little things out and just kind of walk away and let them fucking do it. Yeah. Um, I think you're one of those guys that works better like that. If I, <clears throat> if I just force you yeah. to do shit, you're like, fuck this, motherfucker. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I think it's fantastic. <clears throat> and he's all, he's all being humble about it, but the size and complexity of that building and then the changes that came in to that building and then having to deal with that superintendent which is just totally irrational all the time emotional irrational i think he was an alcoholic but yeah <laughs> he was but it's, it's 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 and he did the whole thing with such a level level head it's um well i mean i just i wanted to throw in too i mean I think the the level of accuracy too that that things were done. So you know when my job was finished, it was like there was <clears throat> no issues, like nothing. You know, it's just hey, no one had to go back up into the ceiling and check. Hey, you know, circuit thirty five says it's in this box, but it's not in this box because it was in the box. So you know, it was just the level of accuracy going from floor to floor just you know um walking on each floor one guy being in charge you know making sure everything's complete 100 percent satisfaction just inaccurate like even for myself like you know i was like damn i was like oh shit i was like this is pretty damn great you know so well you designed the job too right yeah yeah you were in front of a computer designing that thing for <clears throat> what three five weeks. Oh, it was like a month a month and a half a pretty good amount of time man <clears throat> and and that's like that's pioneer shit right there most most people most foremen don't design their work or have ever yeah. designed it but are they still designing over there yeah that's awesome huh. mm -hmm. but even with that like <clears throat> you know i uh even, even with that like uh the other job that they had threw me on after i had finished that job that foreman had designed that job as well who you know i mean i don't know his lifestyle or what he does <clears throat> but uh just looking at a lot of mistakes that were on there it's kind of like in his design yeah in in his design and and then getting on the actual physical job site and seeing everything and then going what the hell like why the hell would you do this you know it's just they didn't make any sense so it's just kind of like um the level at which you operate in when you're when you're you're focused and your in your drive is there it's just so much more you know versus like some guy who's just eh you know i'm here just want to make a check and go home like you can do that all day you know what i mean like anybody can do that all day it's like go ahead you know i mean sure but are you gonna be that type of guy who <clears throat> just shows up you know and you're like you're here or you're gonna be that type of guy who shows up and be like, dude, I'm about to freaking just give my 100 all day, every day, you know, regardless of, uh, you know, what you think you're gonna get, you know, or what you're not gonna get, but you're gonna do it because <clears throat> that's become a part of like, that's who you are, you know, like, that's who you are, you show up and people see it. I mean, even when I was working at, uh, what was it, K2, right? Like, people noticed, like my work ethic because i showed up <clears throat> and that's what i believed in you know i believed right. in greatness man you don't you don't i mean you're not here just to be mediocre i mean you can but i mean what's the point of mediocrity i mean <clears throat> you know you're just another number at that point so
So, you know, it's like, you gotta have that mindset of, you know, greatness, man, you know? Zach was, what were you saying? Oh, I just, I think that's the separation between like a 20 year journeyman and, and someone who wants to be a foreman is that like the 20 year journeyman when I, at least when I came in the field, that's what I, my first thought was like, I want to be a journeyman, you know, like, and then I started seeing the journeyman in the field. And I'm like, okay, that's not what I want to be. I want to be a foreman, you know, like there's a different, <coughs> like you said, focus, drive, wanting to be great rather than just show up and get a paycheck, which will, unfortunately a lot of journeymen do. <coughs> they just want to show up and get a paycheck. Right. But they've been doing it for 15, 20 years. That doesn't necessarily mean anything <coughs> to me. Some, sometimes I think just, <coughs> just um, in the time that I was in the electrical industry, just watching people, their goal was to be a journeyman because that's what they, you know, <coughs> you go through the apprenticeship, get your journeyman uh, card or whatever, and now you're, oh, I'm legit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was kind of the same as Zach, where I was just like, dude, like leader, leadership is where it's at. Leadership is building everybody around you for the sake of the, of the bigger whole. You see the big picture, you figure out the big picture. You don't just, just sit there. There was this one dot job. I was, I would just started doing commercial in, in Flagstaff. And this job, I was working for Colorado River Electric, but they had um, uh, union guys uh, helping them with their manpower. So they stuck me with, this is like my point where I realized I didn't want to be a journeyman. They stuck me with five, five journeymen, and what we were doing was just building a rack down this hallway. And I was, I was making 13 bucks an hour. These guys were making whatever journeyman scale was at that time. And they're cutting a piece of all thread, cleaning the all thread up, going to their ladder, going up, drilling a hole, putting the bulldog in, doing whatever they're doing, and then, and then screwing the all thread in. <clears throat> and me, I couldn't stand even being in that system. I'm like, holy crap. I'm like, all right, all right, everybody, get over here, get over here, get over here. Nobody knew my level, they just knew that I was working with them. Yeah. I was like, all right, dude, you start measuring out all thread right here, cut it this length, deburr it, you start cutting all the all the strut, start deburring it, hey, you start putting the uh, washers, nuts, and everything on this. Hey, bro, you start lay laying out all the all the lines down the, down the hallway, you start drilling them. And we built the whole freaking rack in a day. The way they were building it, we would have been there for probably two weeks, easily. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's like I can't even handle yeah and then i'm making 13 bucks an hour and at the time I, I smoked a lot of weed so i was always stoned walking in the back <laughs> and it's snowing i walk into the trailer because they'd all huddle up on the sides of the trailer i'd walk into the back and i'm just sitting there with my coffee just sneaking in and they're like hey is that alan and then they're like yeah it's alan he's like he's like dude if you want me to get this done today you got to give me alan you know what i mean and i'm like sitting there like fuck yeah dude <laughs> you know what i mean and it's it's those are the little things, you know, those little wins over and over and over again. You just be better than yourself. Just think about it. Because I couldn't even just stand being a part of what those guys were doing with that rack. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I think separates both of you guys. You, you just don't, you don't look at it from a, from, from a perspective of, I just want to get my check this year. You know what I mean? I want to make my, whatever my salary is. That, I mean, it, for me personally, it's never been about the money. I mean, I, I care more about the accolades and the wins and stuff like that. Like you're saying, just those little wins. You're making $13 an hour. Um, yeah, I didn't care. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, some people say it's a bad attitude, like you got to look out for yourself and still make that money. But like, Yeah, but, but with that mindset, though, you wind up getting to the top of the food exactly. chain. <clears throat> the money always comes. That's how I've always seen it. Like you put in the work, the money will come. You put in uh, yeah. the effort, you'll get noticed. But people that are asking for the money without putting in the effort or the what it takes to get that money, they're not gonna be noticed. There's gonna be that guy that's always asking for something, always wanting something, always having their hand out. Uh, yeah. Always showing up with a hangover. Oh, or not sure. if they show up at all. <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree. <clears throat> I mean, uh, you know, uh, leadership is uh, definitely like, you know, if you are that guy, 
which you know you know if you are or not you just carry yourself that way <clears throat> some people might not like you you know because people aren't gonna like you anyways <clears throat> you know what I mean that's you can't yeah it you know and that's I mean that's all right because you know who you are you know and uh the other people see it you know like you're saying just mm -hmm. they they see it and <clears throat> even uh like uh on this last job you know like i saw the needs and i i mean i always see it the need the leader sees the need he sees what's needed <clears throat> and uh you know they give you a job and they want it to get done and they give you a bunch of um you know even because we're talking along these lines of you know the electrical industry they give you these uh apprentices and it's like okay you want to get the job done but you give me these guys and it's like well okay that's fine but i'm going to do what i know i need to which is i need to properly you know show this guy what he's doing train him and then kind of help him to learn quicker to be quicker you know it's just the leader always sees the need to to uh, to teach to to help people to grow as well and um you know if it was just some other regular guy you know it's just gonna be like oh yeah you go over here or you go over there do this and do that come on like who are you really helping here man you know it's like you got to help people to grow too sure. you know so yeah and you know and perspective is everything so you you got to teach you know people like the mindset you got to teach people that mindset like hey you know it's like hey dude no you don't got to do shit like hey i you, you know hey you get to do this bro like just think of it that way and if you don't see it as like you get to do this then i don't know what to do bro i don't know how to help you because if, if you don't see it as a as a privilege <laughs> then like that's hey, funny hey <laughs> you know? that's how you viewed we've covered this in a podcast already like i get to go to work rather than, oh, I have to go to work. Yeah, people used to ask me, they're, they're like, hey, you gotta go to work tomorrow? Like it was on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, no, I get to go to work tomorrow. Yeah. That's just the way I felt. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, it got to a point in time where I, did, I started not seeing it like that. <clears throat> the, thing that was, the thing that was cool for me, like the last maybe five years, because I knew, I knew that I was phasing out. I, I knew that I had outgrown the industry. I needed to do something <clears throat> different. Yeah. <laughs> then I just stayed, and I, th I think a large part of it was my loyalty to all the foremen that I had. <clears throat> and it's not just at AME, but at K2, you know what I mean? <clears throat> it just, it was a, it was a, you go like, all right, I, if I leave, well, what then? You well, know, so, yeah. exactly. And, so yeah. it got to a point where it was just like, you know what, <clears throat> I need, I have to do something different. And I went on a campaign for what, like a month and a half, trying to make everybody super comfortable with it, making myself comfortable with it as well. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but it was it was awesome. It was awesome, and <clears throat> I'm glad that I've that I've moved on. And that's kind of what you do too, is, and that's what I would encourage a lot of people to do is outgrow your position, whatever you're doing, outgrow it. Move yeah. on. Just you know, figure out that point and move on. Personally, I wish I would have moved out 10 years ago, <clears throat> but I sat there and I didn't. And you know, honestly, what's crazier is uh, like, honestly, just the impact. Uh, I think, I mean, the fact that you, I think that's the, um, that's the, um, that's the physical activity of what happened, but uh, you know, like uh, growing your position and leaving, but then even then, not just that, it's like, uh, it's, it's the impact, you know, that you leave that people see because it's like, oh shoot, you know, the electrical industry, you know, without Alan, you know, it's like, dude, like this industry just lost somebody who's got some value and some worth, you know, and and <clears throat> it's the it's the no seriously, it's, it's it's the people that uh you know those people that you see and you're like, dude, like, <laughs> all right, we just lost you know a good guy and and you know even. Like I can say that for you and myself, just, and then, you know, whatever, not trying to be boastful, but <laughs> everybody I've worked with it, that I no longer work with, they're like, they're like, dude, like, man, bro, like, what the heck? Like, 
freaking wish you were still around. And it's just like, hey, man, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Like, hey, I'm glad you guys feel that way. <laughs> that makes me feel good, you know, to know that I've done good by you guys and give you guys that energy to want to learn more, to want to be better, to, to just, you know, to, to, to want to strive and, and get you hunger for that greatness, you know, because to me that means more. Because <laughs> then, you know, you're, you're growing. That's how you grow people, you know. It's like, hey, you know what? Like, all right, man, this guy gets it. He gets it, like, all right, you know, you know when you leave, like, this guy, all right, he's just going to continue to be something great. And and whether that's if he's still in the electrical industry or, you know, his guy's like, hey, you know, man, now he's starting his own thing or, or something like that, you know. But uh, to me, I think that's the, that's definitely the greater impact, you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that, that is awesome, dude. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you were one of those guys when I when I would send you out on like a, a pinch crew doing those ACs on that one deal over uh -huh. over the weekend and Jose's ah, fucking Carlos is the shit I don't think you even knew Jose before then right uh, just kind of a little bit worked with him maybe once but yeah not. he's like man I love you know I, I love that shit too and, and it's funny it, it's funny because there there is <clears throat> When, when you're looking at everybody as competition, it's hard to see their value. You know what I mean? Like what they're actually adding to the big picture. And, right. and you get upset about it. You know what I mean? Get upset about like whatever they're doing. To me, I learned, I learned actually with the last company that I was at, because the previous company, I built the whole freaking workforce. Yeah. Everybody literally been hired by me or worked for me when I was a foreman. Literally the entire, we're talking every single foreman in the company and then downstream from there. I walk into a company where that 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 structure is already in place. Yeah. Now I have to figure out how to get these stubborn motherfuckers to work with me. Huh. How to get them to trust me enough to talk to me, help me, let me help them with their solutions. I'll tell them all the time, like, <laughs> dude. I don't do shit, bro. I'm bored as hell. Let me help me. Let me. Let me. Yeah. Let me in on some of this stuff. <laughs> Tip me up on your problems, dude. People call me up with like you know a. a Twenty thousand dollar mistake, and I'm like, all right, let's let's figure it out. It turns out to not be that much, you know. It, it is what it is. Like I get a, I get a kick out of that figuring out that yeah. big old freaking puzzle. <laughs> and and that's and you know again that's the separation you know like that you learn. <clears throat> that's what separates people from mediocrity, you know, and uh, and greatness. Because regardless of who you are or how good you are, like, you're still gonna make a mistake, you know? All of us do. <laughs> like that time when you dropped that up. <laughs> I dropped a, I dropped a I, yeah, $60,000 generator. <laughs> you know, when I heard that, I was like, yeah. what the hell? I was like, you know, this guy got this much experience. <laughs> I was like, hey, it happens, man. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. It made me feel better about my mistakes. So. <laughs> right? <laughs> that was that was actually the point of that whole lesson yeah. for all of you guys. <laughs> hey, I did it on purpose. Yeah. Just to, you know, I felt better it's the comfort. <laughs> if this guy at this level <laughs> can make this mistake, then hey, I'm all right. <laughs> well, I should, I should have sent the foreman of that job over there to do that. Instead, I was like, you know, I'll get this taken care of. I don't need to bother anybody. Oh man! <laughs> no, what happened was I let the I let the tr the the Tempe crane guy rig rig the generator. And that was a don't ever do that. Don't let them rig. And they they have a thing in there, a disclaimer in there saying that we're responsible for rigging. Hey, if he when he starts going and hooking the generator up, <clears throat> hooking everything up like he's got it. I'm like, all right, you know what I mean? Like, I, and there was a drip edge on the top of the generator, and he had the strap against the drip edge. And it kind of picked up like this, and then after it freed up, it, it went level, and it cut the freaking strap, and the generator <laughs> fell right off the side of the flatbed. Oh, I'm just man. looking at it. I have pictures of it still. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Good times, man. Good but, times. <clears throat> yeah, freaking, it was awesome. It was awesome having you here. And then the thing, the thing is, and thank you for coming out this early in the morning, 5.30 again. Yeah. The um so me personally, just the level of success that I've had this year because you read you read in book after book after book. I think you're a big book guy too as well, right? Oh yeah, definitely like self help books or whatever <coughs> things that can <clears throat> help you just give you new ways to think, you know, just that you wouldn't have thought on your own. 
one of the things, this is interesting, because one of the things, I always looked at self-help books. I was basing my opinion of self-help books off of what other people would say. Oh, I don't even you, uh, fucking, you need to help yourself, you little pussy ass fucking. <laughs> well, the reality of it is, is people that think of self-help books and they steer, they steer away from them because of their little prejudiced view of some uncle said some stupid shit a long time ago. Look at where, look at where they're at. When, when, whenever you listen to somebody else's opinion of something, especially like if you're going into like a wealth building world, an entrepreneurial world, look at the people that are saying that that won't work. Look at the people that are saying that's some stupid shit. Where are they at? First, ask yourself that question because I assure you anybody saying anything like that is not a successful person. They're probably... The alcoholic that shows goes up to goes to fucking work every day, comes home, drinks, passes out, has no relationship with their family, then just goes through the fucking pace paces, <clears throat> like he said, on coast. Yep. When you're coasting in life and you're just doing the same monotonous <clears throat> shit over and over again, you're not fucking happy, you're not strong, you're not powerful, you can't affect anything. All you can do is talk shit about fucking self-help books. But the reality of it is, is I've gone through, I'm, I was going to do a mechanism to do, I was thinking about doing 52 books in 2020. So I don't read, I've listened to them, that's why I had to do the audio book for the mechanism. But <clears throat> I'm thinking I'm probably going to maybe break it in half and do 26. I think that's a good number for the year. And in the books themselves, it was always talking about Get, getting rid of toxic behaviors. <clears throat> you, you, have you heard that a lot? So if you have toxic yeah. behaviors, you need to figure out what that is and get rid of it. I agree. Then I sat there and I fought that for two years. I was listening to these books, so <clears throat> book after book after book after book saying the same thing for two years. And then finally I was like, dude, I know alcohol is my toxic behavior. I know that I need to control it. I know I don't need to go to AA and sit there and pretend like it's a fucking disease. <clears throat> I wish you guys would just, whoever's on AA, just blow me up on this one. It's cool. Um, <laughs> I just needed to control my, my behavior. And just doing that, I, I, I attribute just, just the controlling of only being able to drink three times in 2019. I've been able, I don't even want to. So, shit, I can't even say it because I don't work for anybody, right? So I've gone from the first four months of this year, I have, didn't have any freaking deals whatsoever. And now I've already made over $80,000 in deals this year. Most real estate agents that get trained to do real estate don't even come close to that. With training, underneath a broker, doing all this stuff. And honestly, I have till February of next year. And I, I, I still have fucking three, four months left. Four months left till, till basically I started. It's It's... I had to struggle through all that self-doubt to get to that point. I know it's not spectacular. I know it's not that, that great. I, I know there's a lot of freaking people out there. Hopefully there's people watching this that are in the multi-million dollar level. And I'm proud to say that I have a lot of friends at that level right now. The, um, but the thing about it is, is, is I would have struggled fighting through that doubt drinking. Mm -hmm. I, had to, I had to move that out of the equation or at least limit that in the equation. And with that being said, Next year, I've already thought about it, I already talked to my wife about it, and what I, instead of doing three cheats in 2020, because I feel like I need to have a mechanism controlling that behavior, probably for the rest of my life, until I get to that multi-million dollar level, which maybe I, my goals are different at that point in time. Yeah. Maybe I still want to move to a different, you know, and then still maintain focus, because I'm in a wholly different arena that I've never even experienced. <clears throat> maybe it's, that's one of the, and I know this is controversial, but look at Donald Trump, that dude's never drank a drop in his entire life. Yeah, that's crazy when you think about it, you know. I mean, yeah, no, you just, you know, you never know. And, like, you know, you're talking about um, toxic behaviors, and sometimes you wouldn't even know what a toxic behavior is even, you know, <clears throat> unless you sit there and you, you kind of analyze yourself. Because something that you think could be completely harmless, like, like you're saying, like just drinking, you know, to you, it was probably, you know, hey, it's harmless, chilling, drinking, no big deal. But, you know, when you actually sit there uh, and analyze 
all right, well, you know, it may be harmless, but it's it's not being it's not allowing you to be fully productive either. Mm -hmm. And you know, and again, you know, I don't know, dude. It's like if if everybody, you know, if there's people okay with being again like mediocre, you know, hey man, that's fine. And maybe that's you know, it's not for you. Maybe you know, maybe you're just okay with coasting and stuff, and, and that's fine. But you know what though? But <clears throat> to you know, the people that are actually like you know trying to be better, to do something better, uh, you know, like having those things set in place, you know, like uh, like uh, having that mechanism set in place to where you're like, okay, this is for a reason, and you know, you're gonna set this in place, not because you don't want to do those things, but because you're, you're, you're trying something new, you know what I mean? And, and, and like, I'm pretty sure just from you doing it, you're like, oh damn, you know, you started out, but you probably didn't even think that it was going to take you here now. And now you're just like, damn, you know, just like you're saying, like, <laughs> shoot, maybe for the rest of your life, you know, you're going to, you're going to do this because it's, because you're seeing like the, the, the value of, of it, you know, and even with the fact of Donald Trump not drinking a drop in his life, like, shoot, who knows, dude? I mean, that guy's, you know, he's probably like keen, like he's like, like a freaking eagle, you know, he's like, dude, I'm going after this deal, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. that's probably what, what his mindset was, you know, and people who, people who, you know, uh, criticize self-help books, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, you're right. They're, they're, they're the guys that are like, ah, you know, this guy over here, hey, he ain't doing nothing while they're sitting on their couch, you know, just whatever, you know, talking trash and, <laughs> you know, they're not doing anything, you know, but it's the people who are like, you know what, hey, man, let me dig into, let me dig into this guy's, let me pick this guy's brain. What is, what is, you know, what does he say in his book? Like, all right. And then, you you know, you, you capture a thought and you're like, oh shoot all right this is pretty intriguing here like all right so how can i how can i use this you know and add this to my skill set to mm -hmm. become better to become sharp you know and and uh you can't you can't be something different if you don't do something different you know you can't um <clears throat> you can't know something unless you know something you know it's just like how, how are you gonna know if you never learned it you know you, you, we don't none of us just know it's just like right. le electrical field you know how can you be a journeyman if you've never you know took those steps to learn how to become a journeyman you know mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's almost like simple it's like a simple science you know super simple i don't the, know yeah you know you're, you're absolutely right and the the I thing mean, the thing that's crazy this isn't like a Trump rally or anything like that, but people say, people say Trump, people say Trump, uh, oh, he got a million dollars from his dad or whatever, he inherited a bunch of money. And that's not true. He right. actually borrowed a million dollars from his dad and he paid it back. And let's put this into perspective right now. He turned that into $10, $10 billion. His, his net worth is roughly $10 billion, or at least the last time I heard. Right now, if I put a deal together, I could walk out the I could walk out the door on Monday, make a couple phone calls, and I could have that million dollar loan as well. Now, to put this into perspective. What is it what would it take for me to to take that million dollars and create that kind of that kind of power, that kind of deal structure, that kind of you gotta understand it's not the million dollars. You if you have a deal, if you create the deal, the money's there. 100%. And, and that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize because they want to live in their little mediocre, little bitch ass fucking life and not learn something new. If I put together a deal tomorrow where all I need is a million dollars to put the deal together and then make money off of it and the person that loaned me the money makes money off of it as well, that money is wired into my bank account. Not that I'm anything spectacular. I just was able to put the deal together. So people talk about, like to me, Trump's fucking one of the dopest real estate motherfuckers on the planet. I, I, he just is. He just is. Anyways, I'm, I'm going to shut up about oh, Trump because I know it's super controversial. <laughs> Fuck Trump. But Whatever. 2020. Whatever. But you're not even getting into the controversial part. This is a known fact. I mean, right. in real estate, Trump has proven that he's successful. Yeah. Take all the political stuff out of yeah. it. What you're talking about is his success. Right. And... 
that he is successful at real estate. But let's let's pull this even back <laughs> just a second on that whole concept right there. Well, while, while mm -hmm. there's people potentially watching this, they're like going, hell yeah, yeah, Alan's absolutely right. You can you can absolutely. I just did that last week. You know, whatever. And there's people potentially mm -hmm. watching this that are that are going like, yeah, I can never pull something like that together. I could never do this and this and this. Well, you got to learn. Where the fuck do you learn? You learn from wealth building books, self help books. You <clears throat> you learn from building. You learn from going to real estate investment associations, Phoenix RIA, Arizona RIA. Um, I go to both of them. Awesome. You get around people that are actually doing stuff at a higher level than what you're doing, and that's how you elevate yourself. 